overtime. All right, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. Today we're gonna to try to fix a couple of issues that I'm having with my Robotron 2084. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, picked this up about two years ago from a former arcade owner. Uh, really didn't have to do too much to it, uh, certainly not cosmetically. Uh, in relatively good shape, you know, there's a couple of dings over here on the side, you know, some gouges, uh, that sort of stuff. Kind of the same condition on the other side, a little bit chipped up at the bottom, but it uh, doesn't look like it's ever seen any moisture or anything like that. Um, you know, this side art is, uh, it's not a, uh, a sticker or a vinyl, it's its a stencil, it was painted on, so I really didn't want to have to deal with uh, fixing that, so kind of left it as it is. Uh, otherwise, you know, marquee's in good shape. Uh, the bezel uh, has a bunch of flaking, so I don't know if you can see that right there, the paint. Uh, is flaking off on the inside. The paint gets applied to the inside of the, the glass bezel. Uh, so I sprayed some uh, triple thick, uh, I think it's an acrylic kind of clear coat uh, spray uh, to keep it from getting any worse. Um, the uh, control panel overlay is kind of an interesting one here. So this looks kind of different from what you'll normally see on a Robotron control panel overlay. Usually it has you know 2084 written right here. And there's uh, Williams kind of, you know, copyright stuff uh, printed there, but this one doesn't have it. Uh, I don't think it's a reproduction. Uh, it looks original, looks like the original control panel overlay. I don't think it was a Willis. So Willis was a company that made, you know, uh, um, replacement CPOs back in the day. I've seen a couple others online that sort of have this. I don't know if it was an early version or a misprint, you know, it looks like there's some, there's some colors missing potentially, but uh, interesting nevertheless. And like we saw last time, uh, we've got some uh, rust on the coin doors here that I should definitely address at some point, but I've left it that way for now. The real issue that I'm having uh, is with the sound. So the sound only works properly, you know, one out of 10 times when I turn the machine on. The other 90% of the time, You'll hear in a second, I just sort of get the game over sound repeating over and over again during a tracked mode, uh, during gameplay, uh, and it doesn't change. It just keeps repeating over and over again. So when I got the game, even you know, though I chose not to do much cosmetically to it, there was quite a bit of uh, electronic work uh, that I had to do to get the game working. Uh, when I picked it up, the game didn't work at all. Uh, 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 no sign of life whatsoever. Uh, I ended up... Uh, replacing all the header pins, recapping the monitor and the soundboard and the power board, um, replacing a bunch of different connectors and, and did eventually get the game working and it does work. I've just got this sound issue. Uh, so why don't we fire it up uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with this sound problem. So first I'll turn on the power at the surge protector and then we've got a switch back here, let's see on the back of the cabinet that will turn on. And unless this is the 10% of the time when it does work, uh, once it finishes booting up, you'll hear an explosion. There we go. So that sound that you're hearing uh, typically only is played when the game, when it's game over. Uh, there's usually not much sound or if any sound during uh, a track mode, the mode that it's in right now. Uh, and this is just going to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, let's actually open up the back of the cabinet here. Take a closer look at what's going on. Grab the keys. So these Williams games actually have a, a two-piece back door. So rather than most games where it's one piece and the whole back door kind of comes off, this has two pieces if I can get the... There we go. All right, so as soon as we take the back door off, the game turns off because it's got this uh, interconnect uh, switch that has to be engaged in order for the game to work for safety reasons. You don't want people to shock themselves back here. So once we take the top half of the back door, which, by the way, when I picked up the machine, didn't come with, so I had to uh, create a new back door. 
with a rabbit cut at the bottom of a piece of wood. And I got this original uh, schematic. I bought that online and sort of tacked it back on the way it should be. And then back in here, uh, inside we've got a couple of latches to undo to open up the lower half of the back door. And there we go. That's what the inside of a Williams Robotron looks like. Let's get this open all the way. We've got really five different PCBs kind of running the show. First up, we have this video board here, main board with the CPU uh, and all that stuff. This is sort of common, I believe, between uh, uh, most games. Um, this originally had, a, it took three AAA batteries to power the, uh, the, the, the memory that saved the high score. I've replaced that with an NVRAM uh, sort of you know, modern replacement. Uh, then we have the ROM board. It's got all the game code. Um, obviously, the ROMs are unique for each game. There's an interface board. I believe that controls or handles the, the controller inputs. And then on the inside of the cabinet, we've got a power board, uh, you know, really the, the, the power supply for the machine, uh, and then a sound board. And this sound board is where I think I'm having this issue. Um, you know, Williams also obviously made pinball machines, and these sound boards were common between a lot of their, their pins and, uh, and video games. Uh, and then down at the bottom, we have the uh, isolation transformer. Um, yeah, and the, uh, the monitor up at the top. So um, when I got this game, it was uh, definitely in a, a, a mess. Uh, a lot of the uh, connectors were burnt out. Uh, you know, originally these Williams games had uh, uh, IDC connectors, insulation displacement connectors, were sort of, uh, there were two pins and you push the wire between them and the wire has, uh, the, the, the pins have teeth that bite through the sheathing of the wire to make contact. Uh, very cheap and easy way to uh, create those connectors in the factory, but, you know, led to all kinds of issues, you know, over the years. Uh, those, you know, you start building up resistance there and sometimes literally burning them up. Uh, on the power board, I believe, uh, the, the connectors were burnt up so bad they had cut it off entirely and just soldered the wires directly to the back of the board. Uh, so anyway, I replaced all of those IDCs with, you know, really nice um, modern Trifurcon header pins and new connectors. Did that throughout the machine. Uh, that worked out really well. Uh, cleaned up uh, the uh, the transformer sort of suitcase down there at the bottom. Replaced the old, um, you know, power cord that was a little bit messed up with a new one that uh, was as close to the original as possible. So this intermittent sound issue that I'm having, I'm assuming is coming from the soundboard, which seems obvious, but the way these different Williams boards interact with each other in these games, I guess you can never really be sure. So the, the soundboard uh, is basically a, a separate computer that operates independently from everything else. It's got its own CPU. It's got this PIA chip, which is known for causing problems. Uh, it's got some RAM. It's got a ROM chip that actually has the game sounds. I've tried to, you know, fixing a bunch of different things, replacing a bunch of different things to no avail. Uh, I've recapped it. I think I replaced a transistor. Uh, it's got this test switch here uh, meant for testing the board, obviously. Uh, but for me, when it's in this bad state, I can often press that switch a whole bunch of times and essentially trigger it back into uh, playing the correct sounds, which is weird. So uh, or I thought that was weird. So I tried replacing that momentary switch. That didn't help. Um, so being frustrated you know, after trying a bunch of different things, uh, you know, furiously Googling, I eventually found uh, this post on Pinside. And obviously Pinside is a, a pinball website, but you know Williams made lots of pinball machines too. And some of the, the boards and other components were similar between their, their pins and their arcade machines. Uh, so this user felt uh, seven years ago is describing a problem that uh, to me sounded a little bit similar to what I was facing, you know, saying uh, no sound 19 out of 20 times, you know, one out of every 20 times are able to get sound. So, you know, it seemed somewhat similar to what I was facing. Uh, and this other user, um, Barack and I, uh, suggested pulling and testing the 6810 RAM, try switching it up. Um, and that turned out to work for Feltz. Uh, and what's interesting is uh, Barack and I actually makes uh, the NV RAM chip that I use to replace, um, you know, the, the, the high score saving and uh, uh, um, setting saving uh, capability on my, my, uh, my main board. So uh, we're going to try uh, Barack and I's advice here and, and hope that that maybe fixes uh, the issue. We're going to socket and replace that original 6810 RAM chip and, and hope that that uh, fixes our problem. So uh, to get this uh, soundboard uh, out of the game to uh, make that fix, we're going to 
first disconnect the connectors and, and obviously I replaced all the original IDC connectors with these Trifurcon header pins like I mentioned. So there's four connectors here. Uh, first one I think is power uh, and then the actual speaker wires. Uh, this one is for the, uh, the sound, the volume pot. Uh, and then this connector uh, is what links the, um, the soundboard to the rest of the game through the ROM board. All right, so I've got those connectors pulled. Uh, next thing to do, there's four screws that hold um, the soundboard to the metal plate inside the cabinet. So I'm going to pull those. Got a little electric screwdriver here with a light, which is a bit of a lifesaver. Uh, let's see. Sorry if I'm in the way. All right. Screw number two. Screw number three. There's screws in the four corners. I think this screwdriver bit is supposed to be magnetic, but uh, I don't know. All right. So uh, there's actually two different uh, types of Williams soundboards from this era. Uh, this is the square version. There's an earlier, I think, rectangular version. Some versions of the soundboard have a, um, a connector here to interface with a speech board. You know, Gorgar and I think some other Williams pins uh, had a speech board. Um, is it Sinistar too on the, the video game side? Uh, I actually, uh, about a year ago, on eBay, uh, bought another soundboard just like this uh, that claimed to be working, thinking I could just pop it in and, and chug right along. But of course, you know, a couple of months went by before I actually tested it, and sure enough, that other soundboard didn't work either. Uh, and that was one that had a, a speech board interface. Um, so looking here, you can see all of the caps uh, that I've replaced in the past. Uh, I believe this is the PIA uh, that I replaced before. Doing that didn't help. Um, this is the CPU, the, the CPU for the uh, soundboard. It's a 6808. Um, and then this is the RAM uh, for it. And then the, the sound ROM here that actually has the code for the, the Robotron sounds. Replacing the sound ROM would uh, potentially change uh, the sounds to a different game. Uh, I've even replaced uh, this reset switch uh, up at the top, the interrupt switch, uh, thinking maybe that was being finicky. Uh, and again, you know, that didn't fix anything. And then these are the new Trifurcon uh, header pins um, that I've replaced before. Uh, fuses are good. So what we're going to try to do uh, is, you know, see if, if this RAM uh, chip is the issue. All right, here we are in the garage. This is where I do most of my real work. Um, let me say I have the workshop set up out here. So we've got that Williams soundboard from my Robotron. I've got the soldering iron heating up, ready to go. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to replace this RAM. Uh, chip. We're going to desolder it from the board. We're going to put a socket in, put the new RAM chip in, throw that into the machine, and hopefully everything will work. So, all right. Um, so the tools that I use, uh, I've got a Hacko soldering iron. I'm not exactly sure what model this is. Um, and a really nice tool is uh, I have a Hacko FR301 desoldering gun so you see that in just a second um, but what i'm going to do is uh, to remove this ram chip from the board uh, i'm going to put flux uh, on the part side or on the solder side um, add a little bit of solder to each one of the legs uh, and then i'll use the desoldering gun to lift that off um, you know, strictly speaking, you don't need to add more solder, but uh, because it's so difficult often to remove um, a chip like this from a board um, with all the legs, I'm going to do that to make my life easier. So I've got this soldering pen. I'm just going to go over the legs here, or um, flux pen, add a little bit of flux, make our lives easier here. Don't need to go crazy, but... Add that on. All right. Uh, for solder, I'm using Kester um, 
leaded solder. This is 44 rosin core, um, 0 0.031 inches, 0.88 millimeters. That's what we got there. We find the end of the solder on this roll. There we go. And like I said, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of solder to each of these legs. Just to make everything a little bit easier. All right, add a little bit of solder to each leg. Hopefully you can see this. Once it starts going, it goes easy. So this new fresh solder will make the old solder flow easier. So when I put the soldering gun to each of these legs, it should melt the solder easier and suck it up into the gun um, so that we can get all of the solder off of each leg. And hopefully that chip will fall right out. Um, when you're just removing like a capacitor or something like that, it usually goes really, really easy, but um, an IC like this uh, RAM chip can be a pain in the butt. So here's my Hacko FR301 soldering gun. Basically, uh, it's got a pump and the tip is like a soldering iron. Um, and it's got a little hole, if you can see that. So we put that around the leg, heat it up a little bit, and once it flows, we suck it up, so let's see. Uh, I don't like that first one. That might be a pain. Second one looks good. So we're just touching each pad, each leg, got that solder melting. We pull the trigger to suck up all the solder. I usually come at it from the side, it makes it a little bit easier for the pump for the pump to do its job. All right. These desoldering uh, guns are not cheap, but if you do a lot of board work or a lot of cap kits on monitors or just a lot of soldering work in general, it can really be a huge time saver as compared to as compared to like a solder pullet pump or desoldering desoldering braid or something like that so that looks pretty good this first one it looks like there's some solder on the the part side that might give us some trouble but let's go on the other side Same thing, over, same thing on that side. So I do this little circular motion. It kind of tells me that the leg is free if I'm able to move it around like that. Um, moving the gun back and forth helps get some air in, which helps the pump do its, do its job. What you want to avoid is sort of creating real suction against the board where you might actually lift a, a pad. Done that before. And one thing I've learned is, you know, when you're, when you're pumping the solder off, don't let go of the trigger and turn off the pump as soon as you lift away. Pull away and hold on to that trigger for another half a second or so. So all of the liquid solder that's sort of in the, the tube part here will actually get pulled into the reservoir. Uh, otherwise, and get caught 
um, and clog up the actual pump. Some of these, I don't know, might have some little bit of solder left holding them on. So I think we're pretty good, um, except for the two over here. And these are larger pads that soak up a lot more heat. I think I'm about as good as I'm going to get it right. All right, so the uh, storage in my camera ran out. So anyway, uh, got the uh, old RAM chip removed. The vias on the soundboard are nice and clear on both sides. Here's the old chip that we pulled off. Um, in order to grab it, I actually used uh, this uh, Weha 279 uh, chip puller. So it's basically like a uh, screwdriver with a, a, a bend at the end with a good angle to pull the chip off. It uh, came off pretty easy because we did such a good job uh, pulling the old solder off. So now I'm going to put a new socket on the board. Again, got this from Peter at ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. Uh, this is a DIP24 uh, socket, dual wipe socket. Uh, the, the chip uh, is a DIP24 chip, this RAM, which means it has 12 legs on the other side for a total of 24 legs. So if we look at uh, all of the ICs in this part of the board, all of them have their notch at the bottom sort of indicating direction. So we'll do the same here. And I do remember that that's how it was before. So let's get this lined up and slid in. There we go. So the um, socket will get soldered to the board. The new RAM chip will slip into the socket, making it easier in the future if we need to pull it out and replace it again. Uh, I can't just flip the board over and uh, solder the socket in because I have lots of other parts on the board that are tall. So if I just put it upside down, the socket falls right out. So I'm going to have to tack it on uh, with a couple of quick little uh, solder joints. So let's get this lined up again. So what I'm going to do is load up my soldering iron with a bunch of solder and I'll just tack a whole, I'll, I'll turn the board upside down while holding the socket in place with my other hand and then we'll tack a couple legs in place and then go back through and do all of them the right way. So let me load up my soldering iron with a bunch of solder. There we go. Hold the socket in place and let's just go in and tack a couple of these legs. So we'll just get a little bit of solder on there and hold it in place. This will not be the finished version for either of those legs, but you see how we did a quick and dirty job on a couple of them just to hold just to hold the socket in place while I solder the rest and we see here we go nice and flush to the board. So let's go through and solder each of these legs one at a time. I'll start here. This is a larger pad that needs a bunch of heat to get the solder to flow. See, here we go. All right, that looks good. The rest of these are tiny little pads that just need a little bit of solder. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Oh, that's the one we tacked. I'll do that at the end. It is hot out here tonight. We had a week of nice, milder weather. It's August in Virginia. Hot, humid. I definitely prefer the colder weather. I'm originally from up north. That one doesn't look great. There we go. I'm back along this side. So it never really gets cold enough in the winter where I can't work out in the garage. But it definitely gets hot enough in the summer where... When I don't have the camera and a microphone going, I've got a giant commercial fan blowing at me the whole time that I'm working in the garage. All right, so if you hear any bugs, it's because I got the garage doors open. Little, little, that's where we tacked. Right, coming up on the end here. 
and then this larger one. All right, let's go back and do the ones that we tacked. And where was it right here? Like what that looks like and we'll inspect our work make sure we didn't bridge anything so let's come real close here just to focus let's see looks decent for the most part we'll side angle some of them have more than they probably need but i don't see any bridged I think we're in good shape. Never be afraid to redo your work. It's only your time that you're giving up. I see one that I want to hit again. All right, I think we're good. If I really wanted to overdo it, I could go through and test each one of these with a with my multimeter. You know, I'll do that just to make sure I don't have any bridges. So I've got a Fluke 117 multimeter. Go ahead and get this unraveled. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is turn it on. Set it to continuity, which means uh, if there's a connection, like when I touch the leads together, it beeps, if you can hear that. So I'm just going to go down here, walk them, and, whoop, and make sure I didn't actually bridge anything. So the only time you should hear a beep is like there. I touch two at a time, or two to the two leads to the same leg. So I think I'm good. We could even go through and check the continuity from the leg to the next sort of spot on the board where it. That's good. Uh, that's good. That's good. That one doesn't want to go. Well, that's interesting. I think that was it. What is going on here? That's good. That's good. All right. Again, this is just really overkill. None of those are connected on this side. All right. And again, we could go over and test the top. Yeah, you know, some of these have connections to other places. Uh, I can't even see. Anyway, I think we're good with that. So turn off the multimeter. All we have to do now is plug our new ram chip into the socket if i can get the plug out put it in too hard apparently there we go so let's pop this in we got to be very careful not to bend any of these legs so i'm going to take a second here and make sure they're all kind of straight at least with each other. And the notch here at the bottom shows us our direction, so we'll get the proper orientation here. All of them are facing in the same direction, so the chip should just go right in. I'm gonna look at the sides. 
Got to make sure that I get it in without bending any of the legs. You got to be really careful when you do that. All right, I think we're in good shape. We should be able to just pop it right in. Fingers crossed. All right. I think we're in. I don't see any legs bent. It's really hard to see if they bend inwards, but kind of looking at the side, I can get a profile on where those legs are. So here we are, our new RAM chip, 6810, socketed into the board. I'll look at it from this angle. I think we're, we're in there pretty good. So uh, we've got the right orientation as indicated by that notch. So let's take this back down into the basement and uh, hopefully we have solved this intermittent sound issue. Back down in the basement. Let's get the soundboard back into the machine, test it out, and hopefully we will be in business. All right. Okay. Let's go around to the front, turn on the power here, throw the switch here, and we will pull the interconnect. No. Nope. We didn't fix it. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. Can you hear that? That is not what we're supposed to hear. Oh, okay. It wasn't the ROM or the, uh, the RAM. It wasn't the RAM. We didn't fix it. Son of a gun. So what do we do next? Well, uh, I'm not sure. We can try the CPU. Is it the 6808 or 6802? All right, give it a couple minutes. Let's turn it on again. Oh boy. <laughs> These, uh, Intermittent issues are just the most fun to debug. Nope. It tries. It wanted to. It wanted to. Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right, more bad news. I uh, <laughs> was futzing with the connectors a little bit on the back on the board, um, moving the connectors around. And now I've got no sound at all. Nothing on startup, nothing when the game starts, nothing. Nothing when I press the uh, test switch, nothing at all. Nothing messing with the wires, with the cables. So these are the, the sound wires. Uh, that go into the, the ROM board. Nothing here, nothing messing with those. Um, I don't know. Uh, did some research. People suggested the PIA, which is this chip here, or the CPU for the soundboard right there. So we'll try that. I've got Teddy the Arcade Dog down here helping me out, but so far he's not giving me any luck. So Pull the soundboard out, replace the CPU, and see if that does anything. All right. Let's pull the uh, CPU off of the board, which is this chip here. Again, I've got my chip puller, chip puller tool. It's basically just a screwdriver with a, a bent end. I'm going to get this in between the socket and chip wiggle that in uh, take your time man so you know when oh, that doesn't want to come so when we first you know 
socketed the RAM, put that new RAM chip in, and it had the same effect or it didn't, didn't change anything. At least the good news there was we didn't screw anything up when we socketed the, um, uh, socketed and replaced the RAM. But now, now we have no sound at all, which is just terrible. And of course, we've got this. <laughs> um, capacitor in the way, this axial capacitor to make our life more difficult pulling this CPU out, but it's coming. It's coming. I'm almost there. Almost there. Just take your time, go nice and easy. Here it comes. All right. So here's our original 6808 uh, CPU. See the slug out. Oh, and I just broke a leg off. Wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? So that chip is right screwed. And where is that leg? All right. I found the broken leg. Um, wanted to make sure it wasn't going to short anything out. Uh. <laughs> so there's the uh, CPU with the broken leg. So let me go to my pack here from Arcade Parts and Repair. That's where I tend to get most of my most of my stuff. So uh, the 68A02 is what I want. So let's pull that out of this package. And this plug is just, it's like these foam plugs. All right, so get these out of the way. This was the original um, RAM. So, you know, I might actually pop that sucker in. Come on. There we go. So uh, we go down. So here it is. The new chip 68A02. Let's very gently put this in. Whoa, without. Busting any of these legs. One of them looks a tiny bit crooked. Very gently send it back into position. All right, these are the ones that I ordered here are new old stock. So let's bend these legs in ever so slightly. I'm just bending them against the anti static silicon pad here. Line them up. Okay, I think I'm. I'm good. Nothing bent. Everything lined up. Push them in. All right. I think that's in. Um, while we're at it, why don't we put the old... I'm thinking of putting the old RAM in, but uh, let me leave that. Let leave the new one in for now. Let's put this back into the game and see if that makes any difference. It's usually good to change one thing at a time rather than two. Okay, we've got the new 68A02 CPU uh, on the soundboard. We've got the soundboard back in the game. We've got uh, the harness, the wires plugged back in. Let's uh, pull this interconnect or interlock switch and uh, hope for the best. Okay, uh, the game is on. Ah, oh, please work. Rug pattern. Whoa. That was a good sign. So the volume is uh, way up because I was messing with that too. Let's turn the volume pot down, which is back inside the game. It's this gigantic thing here. I guess I could have done it from the front. I'll turn it down a little bit. So that's a good sign. I'm... Coined up. I got three credits in. Let's see if this works. 
Oh my goodness. It's still way too loud. Let's turn it down. Oh, come on. Hi, Teddy. Where are we? Where are we? There it is. Okay, let's see. It's still a little loud. Okay. Turn it down just a tiny bit. I think we might be good. Was that it? So I think we're good. Um, power cycled it a bunch of times and uh, the sound seems to be working properly. Look at that, I'm so good at Robotron one-handed. So I actually put the um, original RAM chip back on the board, um, buttoned it all up, screwed it down with all four screws, closed it up. And uh, again, I've power cycled it quite a few times and every time the sound is starting properly, or sound works properly, so. I guess ultimately that's what it was, changing the CPU on the um, on the soundboard, replacing the original, was it 6808 or 6802? I think 6808 with a uh, new 68A02 that I got from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. So the last thing I want to do with the Robotron while I've got it out is uh, actually adjust the monitor a little bit. I want to turn down the brightness. Um, I originally did this out in the garage, but uh, in the in the basement with everything, well, with the, the mood lighting on, the arcade lighting on, the screen's a little bright, so I want to turn that down. Um, I think the best screen for that is in the test menu. Um, let's go to the, actually the bookkeeping screen. So like uh, pinball machines, these Williams games have test switches sort of three button test switch so i'm advancing yeah, you like that the sound test worked um let me get to the we'll use that in a minute it's cross hatches let me get to the bookkeeping screen okay so that makes it very very obvious you see how bright uh, the background is it should be pretty black so let me turn down the brightness and to do that back here on this wills gardner k4900 uh, you see it says right there, 19K4901. Um, we can change the brightness on the flyback here. So uh, flyback transformer has a focus uh, potentiometer and a screen pot. And screen's what we want, so we're going to very carefully put our hand in here and turn that down ever so slightly and see what we got on the screen here. So that looks a lot better. Uh, let me see what that looks like on other, on other screens. Yeah, I'd say, and you're getting some glare off the side. Um, let's get back to that. Main screen. How does that look? We can maybe actually come up a tiny bit with the brightness, I think. Just ever so slightly. Again, be very careful. There's high voltage back here. You don't want to accidentally touch something. So, that's not bad. It looks even darker in person than it does, I think, on the screen. Um, let's get back to that. Uh, bookkeeping. Yeah, I kind of like it. Again, you're getting some glare off of the Philips Hue purple lights. I think that's pretty good. And again, it looks darker to be in person than it is on the on the um, camera. So, uh, last thing, let's adjust the dimensions of the monitor, the geometry a little bit. Oh, look how dark that looks. That's great. 
Uh, there's a cross hatch screen in the in the test menu here. Let's advance our way to it right here. So see how it's uh, kind of fallen off the screen over here. I want to move that to the right uh, a little bit. And I think in order to do that, I have to turn off the monitor. Oh, there's horizontal shift, vertical size, vertical hole. But then there's some, um, I guess, jumper wires here. You can't really see that all that well. Um, let me try this horizontal shift just a tiny bit. Let's see what that does. Well, that did something that pushed us farther off of what we want. So let's go back quite a bit there. Um, I think we're uh, not really doing what we need to be doing. Um, is that changing the horizontal size? Uh, let's take a look here. I go all the way over. What does that do? Okay, now that is shifting it. So I can see now we have the whole left side of the hash or the hatch and kind of have to look around the bezel to see that. So maybe we come back a little bit on that. And just a little bit more. Again, trial and error. Sorry if you're getting motion sickness from coming back and forth with the camera. Uh, I still think that's a little off. And we need to come up. We have all kinds of little tiny adjustments to make to dial this thing in. Why don't I mess with this a little bit off camera and then I'll be right back. All right. We're back in the lineup. I think we fixed it. Boy, I hope we did. Like I said, I've power cycled it a bunch of times. Everything seems to be good with the audio, with the sound. Turns out, replacing that CPU seems like the solution. Let's just throw a coin in there. We got the monitor dialed in about as good as we can get it without driving ourselves nuts. Drop a coin in. Man. I, uh, I think we have a working. I think we have a working Robotron. I think we have a working Robotron. I'll leave it at that for now <sighs> we did it I think that's our our first uh, our first fix on the channel there'll be a lot more to come I think next up we're gonna tackle the play choice 10 fixing both of those monitors bottom one needs a rejuve top one I think a new flyback I hope so uh, that does it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime!